Hello everyone, I'm Chris Mozilla Sun. That's nine S's Sun. <laughs> and this is a review of Near Automata. <coughs> Near Automata is an indirect sequel to a game very few people played, which in of itself was a sort of spin off or re repeat of a game that even fewer people actually played. Which in of itself was like a sequel to a series that I don't think anyone played or even heard of. Now near Automata, or Automata, you say Automata, I say Automata. Let's cool the whole thing off. Anyway, I've had this game since release and for whatever reason I hadn't actually gotten around to playing it. I guess I've been too busy playing games like Valkyria Revolution for whatever reason because I'm dumb. That said though, it's a pretty fucking sweet game! Yep. The game follows several androids, namely 2B, who are at war with the machines. The game opens with you engaging in an assault on a machine facility, hoping to take down a key target in the process. During this assault you not only fight a giant claw arm, seriously this is the first enemy you fight, you also meet 9S, who is a a boy in shorts. Better make sure he's actually dead next time. Eventually, after engaging with machines in a variety of combats, from spectacle fighter to side-scrolling beast map and, and even twin-stick shooter segments, you eventually find yourself fighting what can only be described as an actual oil rig. Thing is huge. You eventually end up tearing its arm off and using that to beat it upside the head. And then you blow up. Or do you? Yes, you, you do. You definitely do blow up. Turns out though, death is but a mild nuisance as you find yourself back in your space base. Although there's not much space in the space base, you could say there's little base space in the space base in space. But so starts your epic quest of destroying machines, all in the name of retaking Earth for mankind, who live on the moon for reasons. Glory to mankind! Glory to mankind! On your quest you'll come across numerous machines and characters and eventually meet your main rivals who are two hot members of a boy band with hot manly bods, basically. During all of this, you'll find yourself travelling through many different types of locations. You've got the ruins of a once sprawling city, the carcasses of skyscrapers littering the land, all filled with robots. A desert that has claimed what was once a residential area, once full of life and play, now nothing more than a vast sandpit. A forest that became the stronghold for a kingdom of robots who now live in seclusion, living among the old ruins of a castle, and the nature of the forest with their mechanical spear training. Then also an amusement park. Yeah, it's pretty weird, although this does also tend to be the moment where a lot more of the interesting characters all begin to pop up, as well as a roller coaster. I'm good. Oh, um, all right. These characters range from the smart-talking android Jackass. Jack? Ass? Really? Perhaps the robot Karate Master, that is Master Servo. There's even a Romeo and Juliet play to witness. It doesn't turn out well. And what sort of game would it be without some kind of giant robotic orgy? Yeah, no, I, I think that one stands out a little too much. However, it is through these weird and wonderful characters that a lot of the side quests occur. These can range wildly from simple machines dealing with the concept of humanity and trying to work out how to become more human, or the androids themselves whose quests become that of dealing with the tragic nature of war and conflict 
as they try and deal with their comrades and friends dying to the machines, and the androids are just left with nothing but the emptiness of their orders. It's fucking brilliant. Let's see what you've got. Combat in the Automata is varied and also incredibly fluid at the same time. You'll be shifting between slashing your foes up with spectacular combos to running along in a tricky side-scrolling platforming segment. And before you know it, you'll be playing Gallagher or, or Gradius, or like some other kind of side-scrolling space shooting shames. Fuck. The point is, the game has these many different styles of combat and gameplay that all shift between one another, and it works surprisingly well. It leads to these unique level designs that, while you may have these winding and twisting pathways, it still remains very simple to control thanks to the changing perspective. Gonna show me a good time. But who cares about that? Because you can ride on a moose. Just a little moose friend, you know? Yeah! Ah, oh, I'm sorry, moose friend. It seems you can't go any further. You must die. Oh god, it's killing me! There are so many small bits and pieces that make this game wonderful. Like fishing. Everyone loves fishing minigames in games. Or at least I do. Hypothesis. Garbage. Harsh. There's even a dedicated self-destruct button for crying out loud. I don't really know what it does, but, you know, butts. Neo Automata continued to surprise me throughout the entire game, even when it was introducing new characters and concepts. It's managed to do it in such a way that kept the story interesting, but it never let the story run away from itself and get bogged down in these weird twists and turns. The absurdity of some of the bosses and encounters, the ever-growing dark tones of the story that continued to build, and even like the corruption of the, the system and the games itself, leading to certain things, the loading screens being used to tell the story. It's, it's such a weird and unique, wonderful experience. The story is fantastic, and this is all greatly aided by the side quests, which build upon this world so magically. It has such a hollow and empty undertone to the entire thing, this is all greatly aided by, by the soundtrack, which always manages to kick in at just the right time with the vocals, just adds to that ever extra heavy hitting note. The game constantly just builds the story up and up and up into something weirder and more existential as it goes. It does have an unfortunate dip in the middle where you end up basically replaying the entire game again, but ultimately after that continues to build even more into just a game that left me confused, but also feeling completely worthless and empty inside. And I guess that's kind of what you want from a video game. A feeling of worthlessness. Damn. Anyway, thanks for watching my video, and if you liked it, let me know in the comments, and also if you want to read more words that I've written about Neo Automata, 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 then check out the description in the link below, because there will be a written review that I did on my blog website thingy. Anyway, laters.